There have been a lot of changes in North Central Florida since 1969. One thing hasn't changed. The identity of a killer remains unknown. The second oldest unsolved homicide case in Alachua County happened on what had been a very busy U.S. highway. David, before I-75 U.S. 441 was the major artery between Ocala and Gainesville. There was only one country store along that strip of highway. While the store has since been replaced by a subdivision, nothing can erase what happened there. The murder of Per Bartley is tonight's cold case um, it was just a beautiful, serene setting. Marcy Buchanan loves to talk about her grandmother Pearl Bartley's gardens and her little country store on 441 near Payne's Prairie called Pearl's Place. Beautiful gardens. Uh, she had a green thumb that I do not have, but she just make anything grow. And it was really a lovely place to stop and for people to visit. The store grounds were filled with colorful flowers like camellias and her beloved pepper plants. On October 27, 1969, the world of beauty and color that Marcy loved so much would vanish. Late that afternoon, a customer stopped by to visit Pearl and made a terrifying discovery when she stepped inside the store. She thought my grandmother was asleep, that her head was to the side and her eyes were closed. Between the couch and a Coca-Cola refrigerator, Pearl was sitting upright in her favorite rocking chair. She had been strangled. Across the room, the cash register drawer was open and all the paper money was gone. She was a very fragile person, so she wouldn't have put up a fight with anyone. She would have just said, here, take it and get you a Coke while you're going. I mean, she, she would not have struggled at all. There was absolutely no sign of a struggle. And uh, uh, you're right, this, uh, your typical country store setting, uh, a gentle woman, uh, couldn't imagine who'd want to hurt her. 40 years later, Alachua County Sheriff's Office investigators don't have much evidence to work with. While they do have crime scene photos, they do not have anything to submit for DNA testing. Reports were written differently then, but now on closer inspection, several clues do stand out. There was also uh, a motorcycle seen in the area shortly before uh, the uh, victim was discovered and the motorcycle was described as a black or dark blue motorcycle and it was parked on the side of the uh, uh, building. ASO detectives have pictures of the tire impressions left by a motorcycle outside the store. But inside Pearl's cold case file is the impression of a possible person of interest that stands out even more. We've located one individual that was in the area that particular time who is now uh, on death row. This individual was uh, uh, convicted of similar crimes against elderly women. Uh, strangulation type crimes. That individual is Carlton Gary. As a 17 year old, he was arrested in connection with several fire bombings in Gainesville. Investigators say he was known to still be in the area when Pearl was murdered, and her case fits a pattern that would later put Gary on Georgia's death row. Gary was a suspect in a series of murders and rapes of elderly women in New York and Georgia. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1986 in Georgia for raping and killing three women. But it's the nickname given to him by Georgia newspapers that makes him stand out in Pearl's case. He was dubbed the stalking strangler. Could Pearl have been one of the first victims of a man who would become a serial killer? And so we're taking a look at that individual to see if perhaps while he was in the area, uh, there may be some link to be him being in the area in this death occurrence. So far, Gary has refused to talk to investigators about any cold cases. For Marcy, it's hard to believe how much time has passed since the colorful, loving woman she knew as a child was murdered. It's just as real to me. Uh, almost a day does not go by that I don't think about what her final moments must have been like. We really would like to see some closure to it. ASO cold case detectives are hoping that someone will have information about Carlton and Gary and the time that he spent in this area or maybe know about the motorcycle seen outside Pearl's Place. If so, contact the cold case unit at 367-4161.
Paige, can you tell us anything else about Carlton Gary? He was in Gainesville, David, because his mother was living here at the time on Southwest 7th Avenue. Now, in addition to the grocery store firebombings conviction, he was also charged with a couple of different breaking and enterings in this area. Earlier this year, his death row case in Georgia made it all the way to the U.S. 11th District Court of Appeals, um, which is uh, in Atlanta. They found no cause for reversal in that case, so right now his only hope to get off death row would be from the U.S. Supreme Court. Okay, hopefully somebody can step forward with a little more information, perhaps about Carlton Gehrig. Stick around. Bill has your weather forecast coming up next.